Today we have Mesquite. This comes to us from viewer and friend Ted Helvig via his son Darren who stopped by a while back and brought me several pieces of wood. I turned the first half of this piece a couple months ago, a while ago, and this half has been sitting here teasing me ever since and today's the day. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening as we like to say here at Shady Acres Wood Shop. Howdy, let's take a closer look at it. The piece is about eight and a half by five by about three and a half inches tall. I'm gonna find the center here, right about there. I'm gonna take it to the drill press, drill a flat spot for my chuck jaws to set again. In the middle of that, I'm gonna drill a hole for my woodworm screw. We're gonna get this mounted up on the lathe and get to turning this beautiful piece of mesquite. I can't wait, it's, it's, just, it's just gorgeous wood. See you over here at the lathe. I'm just gonna make this quick, but if you have trouble with your woodworm screw not holding, or you're afraid to use it, or you think just that little bit isn't gonna do any good, you, you, you just don't trust it, I have a video called uh, How to Use Your Woodworm Screw, and I recommend you watch it. It's a good video, it's one of my better videos, and it tells you a lot that you need to know. You can't just stick your woodworm screw in there. It, it, it depends on the chuck, the maker of the chuck, and what your woodworm screw is like. This is a Supernova 2 chuck. You can't just stick it in there. You can't just stick it in there and tighten the chuck. You can't do that. See the flats on here? Those go in a particular place. Right now it's loose. I'm slowly tightening it. Watch this gap here. I'm slowly tightening it. Now that it's tight, I'm gonna back it off ever so slightly and I'm gonna rotate that screw until I find those flats. And then I'm gonna pull out on it. That's important, pull out on it. And then tighten it up. You see that close up? Now it's gonna hold and it's not going to give you any issues and it's gonna hold really well if your piece of wood is solid. Now here's the wood. You also need a flat spot. Not pretty flat, flat. Not almost flat, not a little piece of bark in the way, flat. That goes against the front of the chuck jaws. Then you have to have the correct size hole drilled. This is a 3 8 inch woodworm screw. This is a 5 16 inch hole. If the wood is soft, drop down a 64th or maybe even a 32nd of an inch, smaller. And this is a small thing, but it's a, it's a big thing to me. It's, it's small, but it's important. It's hard to screw this on without the chuck spinning. It's hard to, to do it manually like this and screw it on there because you're going to get a you're gonna get off track. You're gonna get this way or that way or that way or that way. But if you do have it spinning, if your lathe has variable speed and will go down below 100 RPM, right now I'm at 84, it's so much easier. It's just easier, that's all. You can just put it on there. You can look at it and see that it's straight all the way in. And then don't forget to let go. If you don't let go, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt bad. How do I know? <laughs> Cause, cause I know, it hurts. Let go, and then tighten it up. Now you can see it sits nice and flat. That isn't going anywhere. This is a nice solid piece of wood. That wouldn't come off of there if you wanted to. Watch that video. It's a short video, I don't know, five minutes long probably. It'll give you some good information. So just a little something for you. Now I am gonna use tailstock support. I, I really don't feel I need to. I'm only doing it because you're there. If you weren't there, I'd do it without. And as long as we're in a teaching mood, I guess, uh, I get asked about this a lot. What's that big thing sticking out of your tailstock, Phil? What is that tooling you have, Phil, on your tailstock? Where can I get one of those? What is that thing? Well, it's, it's nothing more than a live center. This is a one-way brand. Just look up one-way live center. That's all it is. This is also a live center. You can see that it's quite different. This is maybe what a lot of people are used to, some, something along these lines. There's other kinds. Yeah, it's kind of expensive. I can't remember how much, $135, $150, something like that. And this is 1995. But this has got big bearings in it, and you can trust it, and it'll last forever. And it's got different cones on it. It's got a big old cone to replace that one. Comes with that. Comes with a knockout bar that you can stick in here to lock that down and unscrew this. I also have a soft touch that I made. You can unscrew this and screw this on in place of it if you don't need a point. There's another point under, under here that you can use, a cup center. You can use it like that. I almost always use this. 
just because I like it, that's all. You might not like it. You might want to use the cup center. Do that. Do what makes you happy. Because that makes me happy. So it's it's nothing but a life center, that's all. Just a nice big one. And then one other little thing, I like to spin the piece up and let the live center find its own spot that it wants to be in. Just because of the grain of the wood can be just a little bit different, a little bit softer on one side of that hole than the other. Let it find its own spot. Now it's happy. And if it's happy, I'm happy. And if I'm happy, you should be happy. I like to also have my tool rest nice and close to the piece. I don't want to clear back here. Because this is a harder wood, it's quite hard. I've got a nice freshly sharpened 5 8 inch bowl gouge here. I'm using the long one today instead of this little bitty short one. Give me a little more leverage, but we're probably going to do a lot of sharpening. And I'm going to start from the top side down to try and keep whatever tiny bit of bark is on here. There's not a lot, but if I come up this way, for sure I'm going to lift that right off of there. We're probably going to turn some of this away anyway along the sides. We're definitely going to be turning the ends. So I, I just want to come this way for a while. Then eventually we'll come this way. Going to be turning at 700 RPM. 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on. And the glove, because those chips coming off of here at this angle, they hurt. Stop and adjust your tool rest. Get closer. More support is good. No more flat spots. So now I'm going to come down to the bottom and mark out for a tenon, I think. I guess I should have flattened this off first. I'm not sure how flat the bottom is. But we'll find out. And I did just sharpen up again too. Now it's flat. Now I'm going to use this diamond point tool to square up the sides of the tenon. And that's good. Now I can move back over here to the side, then down the base a little bit, smooth out my cut. Look at that grain. Oh my. Nice stuff. And I'm going to switch to my negative rake scraper so I can really smooth them out. And that'll do. Time for sanding. I'm going to start the sanding with my Sando Flex. This is 180 grit and that's as fine as I'll go. I'm going to sand all along this top edge. When I'm done with that, I'll switch to my 2 inch disc starting at 80 grit and working up through 400. I'll have the lay spinning in reverse for that at about 370 RPM. I'll show you what those look like as soon as I get my mask on.
And I'll be doing a lot more of that, but that's generally what it looks like. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about the sandal flex. And I hear from a lot of folks in the UK that can't get one. Australia can't get one. New Zealand can't get one. We have a supplier here in the U.S., supergrit.com. They will ship worldwide. Yes, you will have to pay shipping. And I know that shipping is horrible. I know that. But it's a one-time purchase. I don't know what it would end up costing you here in the States. These are around forty, forty-five dollars, something like that. And then refills. If you if you if you live somewhere outside of the states, get your refills when you get this. You might as well just pay shipping once. These do wear out, but they last a long, long time. That reminds me. Oh my gosh, I'm so ashamed of myself. I was talking to the guy that runs Super Grit, and they're gonna come up with a Shady Acres Wood Shop special where you buy the. You buy the uh, sandal flex and, and then it'll come with the grits that I recommend, I guess, which would be something like 120 and 180 grit. They come packed with an 80 grit already installed in the sandal flex, but I use 120 and 180 on the bark. I think he talked about having a special price on that Shady Acres Woodshop special. I'm, I, I, I got to get back to him. I can't believe I forgot about that. That was, that was three weeks ago or something. So I'll do that. Maybe, maybe you'll be able to ask for the Shady Acres Wood Shop special if, if I can possibly remember to get a hold of him. And then you'll save money. I don't get a thing for this. I don't get anything to tell you. They're not paying me to tell you. They're not giving me anything. They're just sellers. They have the best price and the best selection online. And if you go there and buy their refills, you can get Sandoflex brand refills or you can get Super Grip brand refills. This is a super grip, and they last much longer, much, much longer, much longer, and they're cheaper. So definitely buy the uh, super grip refills if, if you're going to go there. I don't get anything to tell you that. It's not an advertisement. I'm sorry if it sounds like one. It is not. So let's move on to the two-inch disc. That's what that looks like. I also get asked a lot. Boy, this is a this is an answer questions day, I guess. Why do you sand in reverse, Phil? Well, when you're done turning, feel the piece. Run your hand this way, and then run your hand that way. You'll see that running your hand this way is a lot rougher than running your hand that way, and that's because when we're turning wood, we're pushing the fibers of the wood that direction, and so you come this way, and it feels rough. You go this way and it feels smooth if you've done a good job with your tools. By sanding in reverse, we can pick those fibers up and cut them off and you get a smoother finish faster. So it's just it's just easier. It's a, it's a nicety. It's not a necessity. This is the first lathe out of three that I've had that has reverse. So plenty familiar with turning or sanding in this direction. Actually, I, I sand, I don't always say it, but I sand in both directions anyway. This is forward. I do that, I do that, I do that on every piece inside and out even though I may not always say it and that just gets it extra smooth, I mean it's, it's, it's so important that it be smooth. Okay, I'll bring you back here in a little bit after I've sanded up through 400 and after I finish the top and we'll put some, I think, sanding sealer on here. See you in a bit. Sanding sealer it is and look at that. Look at that grain and color. Absolutely amazing. This is shellac based sanding sealer. I will apply two coats of this and then two coats of shellac. I won't show you the shellac because it looks exactly like this. No difference at all. I apply it the same way. It comes out of a can ready to use. I don't change it in any way. But that's some amazing color there. And then I've got some in this little can and my brush. And I'll just brush along this top edge so we don't have to bother it later. So I'll get this done up. It's late now. It's almost 6 o'clock. Dark out. So it'll be tomorrow. But it's going to look nice. Yes, it is. You'll see. 
Have a good evening. See you tomorrow. I've got a nice finish on the outside. I have the piece turned around with the tenon mounted up in the chuck. We're going to be turning at 725 RPM. Mask and face shield on. And it's going to be a bumpy ride here for a while till we get past some of these high spots. I just want to see where I am on the sides here. Now we're doing okay. Might be able to come out a little bit further. See how that looks. That uh, might be about right. I think it is. Well now, <laughs> I gotta go sharpen up. I was asked once by a nice lady whose name escapes me why I don't just continue the cut all the way to the middle every time. Two reasons. Uh, that middle ties together the sides so these don't get out here and start shaking because they don't have any support. That's one reason. The other reason is this is moving really slow. Out here the rotation is fast. And it's easy to cut. But the closer you get to the middle, like right here in the middle, it's not moving at all. It's not going around at all it's right in the very middle. Or if it is, it's like 3 RPM or something. So it, it's hard to make a cut like that. That's why I come back and I do it this way. It's just quicker and easier than being frustrated every time you get to the middle. Now see, see, I lost my train of thought by telling you that. I should have, I'm, I'm shear scraping now out on this outside edge. I should have done that before I cut away my support in the middle. Now it's bouncing around pretty good. But we'll get there. I don't think we're quite there yet, but we must be getting close. Well, now yeah, we're closer than I thought, about a half an inch total. But I can only go another quarter inch or so. Okay, that's going to do it. I 
I've shown this plenty of times, but I'll show it again. I just got asked today. You know, I, I sharpen this on my grinder, both both sides. That's what makes it a negative rake. But every once in a while, in between taking it to the grinder, I just take a round shank screwdriver and raise a burr on there. And that's all you need to do. You don't need to sharpen it every time. You just need a burr on this edge. It's not something you can necessarily see, but you can feel it. I'm just bending this metal up. Okay, that'll do it. Time for sanding. <laughs> well, I'm not sure I thought out how I'm going to do the sanding on this piece. It's going to be a little scary. Yeah, i got two high points, kind of three high points and a low point. I'm just too lazy to sand it while it's standing still. I just, I just can't stand doing that. It drives me nuts. So we'll see how this goes. You, you have to use, you have to use a really light touch and you have to have a soft pad like this. That's so important. You try and do that with a hard pad, oh my gosh. I can't even imagine. I wouldn't even try. Okay, I'm gonna have the lathe spinning in reverse at about 425 RPM. And I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I get my mask on. Oh yeah, I'm starting at 80 grit and working up through 400, just like on the outside. Well, that's not so bad. Not as bad as I thought. We'll try forward. Yeah, I like reverse better. You don't want to breathe while you're doing that. Just hold your breath. I'll do that up through 400 grit. I've done so much talking in this video that I'm just going to go ahead and put the finish on. I got to I got to make the video shorter. I've, I've done way too much talking. So I'm going to go ahead and put the finish on. I'll bring you back when it's time to take the tenon off. See you in a bit. Got a block of wood mounted up in my chuck. I'm going to put a non-slip cloth over that and bring up the bowl and bring up my tailstock. I still have that center hole there for reference, so I can just drive my live center right into that. Apply a little pressure, bring up my tool rest, spin the piece up, see if it's running true. Pretty dang good. Turn the speed up to about 600 RPM. I'm gonna grab a 3 8 inch bowl gouge and begin to commence to removing that tenon. Pretty sure we have lots of clearance, but we'll check. Well, not all that much, but we have it. That's pretty small. I want to adjust my tool rest a little closer, a little bit higher here. And I'm gonna use a 3 8 inch sweat back bowl gouge so that I can get in there closer. And I'm gonna turn the speed down to about 400 RPM. Sorry. I adjusted the zoom and forgot to turn the camera on. I just finished it and it was a beauty, dang it. I'm gonna take this over here to the workbench, sand it up, sign it, get it finished and I'll be right back. Be sure you stick around at the end of the video so you can see the before and after shot to this piece. If you'd share the video, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Well, here it is. One mesquite live edge bowl in the books. And it's a beauty. I didn't see any critters or faces in this one. You might. Let me know if you do. Beautiful grain, beautiful color. Nice finish. There's the bottom all finished up. 
It's just real nice. I wish I had more of this mesquite. It's, it's good stuff. This was pretty fun to do. Not too hard turning. Mesquite can be pretty dang hard, but this wasn't too bad. I did have to sharpen quite a bit, though. But that's just the breaks of the game, isn't it? Let me know what you think. Thank you, Ted Helvig, for sending this along for all to enjoy. I really appreciate you all spending your time with me today. I look forward to your comments. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.